Media. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Media Channel. I'm your host, William Hugh. You know, loads of you keep asking how I do my chroma keying. You might know it better as green screening or blue screening. The magical ability to change the background without affecting the foreground. A bit like this. Or this. Or even back to this. Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you how I do it. Oh yes, let me explain. First, you will need a background screen in blue or green. Why blue or green? Well, in theory, you could use any colour you want. But blue and green are the furthest away on the spectrum from colours that appear in skin tones, such as red and yellow. If you try to key out red or yellow, for example, you may end up looking like this or like this. So it's safest and easiest to stick with blue or green. So is there any reason why I chose blue instead of green? Well, it's simply because I found a roll of blue cloth going cheap on a market stall. So I bought it. You can, of course, buy professional blue and green screens, but to be honest, any strongly coloured material seems to work as well. So let's have a look at my setup. I simply took the cloth I bought and attached battens at the top and bottom using clothes pegs, or C47s as they're known in the film industry. Then I simply hung it on a set of wardrobes in the spare room, stretching out the pegs to tighten it and make it as crease free as possible. Next, I use lamps to light the screen as evenly as I can. Shadows or variations of shading will make it more difficult to key. With that completed, you can now place yourself in front of the screen, but not too close. You don't want to cast shadows onto it. When you light yourself, make sure that also does not cast shadows onto the screen. Here, I rely on the window to light me, a side illumination that will cast any shadows well away from the screen. With everything set up, you can now shoot your video and bring it into Sony Vegas Pro to add some chroma key. So here we are in Sony Vegas Pro and this particular version is 13. And here is the blue screen clip I shot earlier. So let's add chroma key by clicking here on the video event FX button and find the chroma key. There it is, so a quick double click to select it. And there it is. Now the plugin has already made a default selection as to the colour, which to be honest looks pretty good. If it wasn't so good, you would need to turn off the effect by clicking here then clicking on the colour tab here, and this gives you access to a dropper tool, with which you can sample the bit of background you think would give the best key. And if we enable the effect again, we can see it there in action on the screen. Now to see how effective the mask is, click on the Show Mask Only button here, and we can see that the mask is not actually very good, as the white areas are still showing detail. What we need are solid areas of black and white. So now it's time to experiment with the colour box and the sliders until we get the presenter shown as a solid white silhouette surrounded by solid black. Don't worry so much about the edges of the screen, as we will mask those out later. If you find the edges look a bit too sharply cut, you can soften them by using the blur slider here, but use it sparingly, as it can create a shadow-like effect on the finished mask. I rarely set it higher than 0.007 myself, OK, so let's click the mask off and see how it looks. Pretty good, actually. All the areas you see as black are actually see-through. The only thing that gives it away are the lamps, which are still in shot. So let's remove them. Click on the Event Pan Crop tool here, and beneath the keyframe position timeline here, we can see a second timeline, and this controls the masking. So making sure the cursor is at the beginning, click here to enable the masking, and we will now create what is called a garbage mask to remove the stuff we don't want. The easiest way to do this is to click here to create a rectangular mask. Then with your mouse, drag a box which starts off screen at the bottom and covers the presenter. Now that's not bad, but it's not perfect. So let's add a couple of extra anchor points by clicking the anchor creation tool here and clicking the edge of the mask to add more. That should be enough. If we now return to the normal edit tool here, we can move the points to create a snugger fitting mask, like this. And don't forget to allow for the presenter's arm movements, otherwise you may have to adjust the mask as you go along. So now we have a fully transparent background, and any picture or video we place below it on the timeline will show up as the background. 
So I'll just drag my own grunge background pick in here, render it to video, and this outro is what you get. So that's it, that's how I blue screen my videos. Hope you found it helpful. And now, a piece of news. In the next few weeks, I hope to be bringing out a new series of quick tips. That's short, quick tips to help newbie film and video makers to do their thing. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Well, that is the lot for this episode. If you've enjoyed it, why not drop a thumbs up or even a comment below? It's always appreciated. And if you haven't already done so, then hit that subscribe thingy there. Because that way, I'll see you here next time and every time. On the Media Channel.